So, we have been discussing be fruitful. But why is it important to be fruitful? It's just it's something we're discussing so we can get a head start in life or, you know what I'm saying, something we can make sure that, that we reach our goals with? Or is it a little bit more to that? Grab your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles, because we're about to jump into that discussion right now. His humble servant and this is straight word the Bible study series where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of the unnecessary fluff and distraction we are in our be fruitful series and it's been getting real good we talked about what it means to be fruitful and from a spiritual standpoint uh, we've talked about you know how we actually uh, apply that to our lives but now let's get into a discussion of why should we apply it to our life? What is the purpose of being fruitful? Is it just a, a good method of getting to the goals and, and desires we want in life? Is this something we can add on to our lives to make our lives better? Or is it a little bit more to it than that? Well, you know how we do. Let's jump into the word and we're going to investigate that very question now we have been looking at John 15 throughout this series and like I said that's a chapter that's really going to uh, tell a lot about this topic so if you haven't already jump in and read the whole chapter but we're going to take a look at a passage there in John 15 so jump in with me we're going to look at John chapter 15 we're going to look at verses 1 and 2 and then jump down to verse number 6 there it reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 6, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and burn them into the fire, and they are burned. Okay, so what is this showing us? Remember, we are to be fruitful. We are vines that are connected to the branch. As we discussed last week, the branch is the source. The branch is God, and the branch is actually Jesus through what he did for us. So he provides a source of nourishment for us to, to, to grow fruit and develop and be able to support the fruit that we're growing from us, the branch, right? But this here is showing us that either one or two things are gonna happen. If you're a branch that does develop fruit, then God who tends to the garden is going to purge you it's going to take away unnecessary things from you and allow the things that are good to continue to develop and grow. That way, you begin to produce even more fruit. But if you don't produce fruit at all, then you're going to be cut away. You're going to be purged from the rest of the branches. And then verse 6 shows us what happens to those things that are cut away, those things that are purged. They're thrown and cast into the fire. So what does that mean for us? That means a few things. One, it means it's not just enough to be connected to the vine. And sometimes we look at it in life as, you know what, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, I go to church. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing everything that I need to do. I'm connected. I'm connected to God. I'm one of his. So I'm good. I don't got to worry about nothing else. 
this verse is showing us that's not true. Just because you're connected to the vine does not mean you are producing fruit. Remember what we said fruit is. Fruit is you fulfilling the purpose that God has for your life. So to be connected to him and, and not fulfill your own purpose that he's given you is not enough. Man, okay. So that helps us think a little bit deeper about that situation. But let's jump into some more scriptures and we're going to see some confirmation of that idea, right? So jump in when we, we're actually going to go to Matthew chapter 25. And this is another chapter that we talk about a lot on the Straight Word series, Matthew chapter 25, because it's, it's very um, helpful in understanding things of this nature as well. But there's a parable here that talks about a man who gives talents to three individuals. Two of them are fruitful. Remember, talents in this instance is talking about a type of money. So they take their talents and they flip it. They, they, they make it grow. They bring forth uh, an increase. So when the man comes back and he asks about his money, there's more. But there is one who was given one talent. And he didn't increase. He buried that talent. He wasn't fruitful with it. Let's see what God had to say about this individual. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 25. And it's going to be verses 26 through 30 26 through 30 and it reads his lord answered and said unto him thou wicked and slothful servant thou knewest that i reap where i sow not and gather where i have not straw thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i should have received mine own with usury Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him which have ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have an abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he have. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what do we see here? It's not enough to be connected to God. Think about it. This parable is showing us what it means uh, as far as our relationship with God and what he's done for us. So that person who had the one talent was connected because he had a relationship with God. He actually received a blessing from God and he had everything that everyone else who was connected to God had the same opportunities and the same chances to do something with. Yes, they had different amounts of talents, but guess what? He had something that he had the opportunity to do something with as well. But because he was unfruitful, God came back and said, you know what? Not only take his talents and give it to the ones who, who were fruitful, but cast him into the outer darkness. God has no room for things that are not fulfilling his purpose. He doesn't need us. We need him. So this is showing us it's not enough just to be connected. God said it would have been better if you took your talent and instead of, of doing something creative to make more from it, at least you could have you could have put it in the exchangers. You could have put it in the bank system, right? And in the bank system, it would have gained uh, usury. It would have gained taxes. It would have gained interest. So at least it's sitting there instead of you burying it in the ground something would have came from it. God just wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to develop something. Remember the first verse we read it said God is going to purge us to allow us to, to grow more fruit. So if you're just growing a little bit of fruit but he sees productivity in your life then he will work on you and develop you. Don't worry about that part. Just worry about fulfilling the purpose that he has placed in your life. Even if it's a small portion, he will help you grow that. Wow, so we've seen an example in the scriptures. It was a parable, right? But it helps us understand how being fruitful is not optional. 
And it helps us understand how being connected to God is not enough. A lot of people are connected to God. A lot of people know who God is. A lot of people talk to God and have a relationship with him. But that's not enough if you're not fruitful, if, you, if you're not fulfilling your purpose. It even says it like this in 2 Timothy 4 and 2. It says, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. So it's showing us always to be productive in the things that God has given us to do. Sometimes we look at being productive as far as God's purpose as something that's not mandatory. You know, we can choose to do it or not. It's optional. It's extra credit. But these scriptures are showing us that's not so. Also, as we look at being fruitful from this standpoint, it helps us understand a few other things that God was showing us through the scripture, uh, specifically what he showed Israel. It helps us understand uh, uh, the concept of a biblical time, right? It helps us understand the concept of a biblical time. It helps us understand the concept of the Sabbath. It helps us understand uh, in Deuteronomy how God is telling the, the children of Israel, when you grow your crops on the seventh year, give it room to, to replenish, give the ground uh, time to rest so that you can continue to grow crops on it. How does it tell us about these things? Well, let's think about the Sabbath. God fulfilled his purpose as he was created for seven, for, for six days, right? And on the seventh day, he rested. He rested from his purpose so that he could replenish, he could uh, 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 rejuvenate himself and then continue to do what he needs to do. And he commanded us to do the same, right? Same as what we see he commanded the children of Israel with allowing the ground that they plant crops in to get a year of rest. Let that ground replenish. Let me do my thing to rejuvenate those nutrients in the ground so, you know, it can it can get what it needs to, to be good soil again so you can plant in it again. A tithe. Remember, we discuss a biblical tithe, right? Which is not just giving 10% of what you have, which the word tithe does mean one tenth. But a biblical tithe means you're using this tenth of what God asked for to fulfill his purpose. Remember, as we discussed that, and if you haven't seen that lesson, go back to the biblical tithing lesson. But we discussed there that tithing had a specific purpose of feeding those who didn't have of providing a sacrifice for those who couldn't provide for themselves, of making sure the priest who didn't have a job had food and was provided for. So it fulfilled specific purpose, the purpose that God had for it, not that man had for it. And that's why the priests did get in trouble as they began to misuse it. Malachi had to come and warn them what God said, right? So that goes all the way back to our individual lives. Being fruitful. Being fruitful does not mean being wise to your own understanding. But it means fulfilling God's purpose. And now we see that once we become connected to God, connected to the vine, that being fruitful is not optional. It's not something we add to our lives that we already planned out. It's not something we just, you know, do if we want to. If you're not fruitful, you're going to get cut off thrown into the fire you're going to get disconnected from God and you're going to get destruction that's not what we want well how do we know that I'm not taking this too far you know so I'm not taking this out of context and making too much out of it right let's jump into one more passage that's going to help us understand that and we're going back to Matthew chapter 25 we're going to look at a passage that we like to look at in this series turn with me to Matthew chapter 25 and we'll look at verse 41 through 46. This is going to help us understand that this thing is a serious matter. It reads, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, 
into everlasting fire. Prepare from the devil and prepare for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in. Naked and ye clothed me not. Sick and, and in prison and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So this is a reminder, and I know we go over this passage a lot in the Straight Word series, right? But this is a reminder that God has a specific purpose for our lives. And if we claim to be his, we claim to be his children. That purpose is not optional. It's not something we can choose to do with our spare time. His purpose for our lives is the focus. It's the main thing. And we got to keep the main thing the main thing, right? So now that we understand what it truly means to be fruitful, and that being fruitful means fulfilling the purpose that God has for you. We know when we become connected to God that we have to make sure we're being fruitful and we're fulfilling his purpose. It's not optional. Well, I'm glad we could have this discussion because, man, this topic is getting real good. And um, that last passage that we read in Matthew 25 is going to help us get into our next topic in this series which we're going to discuss fulfilling God's purpose because I know God has a different purpose for each individual but there has to be something in, in common when we say God's purpose so how do we know what that is but we'll get into that deeper next week right now let us pray quickly together dear father we thank you so much for allowing us to continue to study your word we thank you for uh, the Holy Ghost giving us revelation and leading and guiding us we thank you for how we can take a topic that we may have looked at on a surface level, but you're allowing us to get a deeper revelation and understanding of. Dear Father, we ask that uh, you, you help us to repent and to cleanse ourselves so we be a, a vessel that can be used by you. Help us turn away from our sinful lifestyle and help us to fulfill the purpose you have placed inside of us. For those who don't know what the purpose that have been placed in them, help us to draw closer to you so that we can hear instruction and hear what the purpose is that you have for us, Father. Help us to reach others and be a light to other men. Not that we get the glory, but that you get all the honor and glory out of our lives. These things we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. All right, so like I said, next week we're going to jump right back into this discussion and it's going to get a little deeper. I know this one is really deep and it really makes us take a look at ourselves in the mirror. But better to do that now where we can correct it than it be too late and we're standing before the Father with fault. Well, we're going to jump into it next week. Remember, always study the word for yourself. So you can get the straight word with no chase.